Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back on the Uncle Sharma channel. We've got some news for you. Meanwhile, West Ham are close to agreeing a deal to sell striker Gianluca Scamacca to Atalanta. The deal will be worth up to £26 million. Sky in Italy are reporting Scamacca will fly to Italy today for a medical. So there is. Looks like Johnny Scams, Gianluca Scamacca, has chosen. It's crazy to say. He's chosen Atalanta over Inter. Now, let's react to this because you guys know Scamacca was, out of all the striker options, and we've talked about it, the striker options out there these days are absolutely diabolical. <laughs> it's the, the striker market is just famine, famine out there. But out of the options out there, Scamacca was... We've talked about it in my live streams. He was my number one option because even though he had a stinky season at West Ham, also injuries, uh, but we also knew that David Moyes, that style of football at West Ham, was just never going to be a good fit. But the potential, the, the raw material, you guys know I love talking about the raw material with players. And with Skamaka, I, I just keep seeing this raw material, a guy who's six foot four, six foot five. But being able to be technical, ball striking ability, especially from distance, volleys, really, really, the potential is right there for this guy to be the future number nine of Italy. And we know that Inter, in the last few days, you know, I wasn't able to cover it, the news, because I was away, but it looked like Inter were moving to secure Scamacca, and apparently Scamacca had given his preference to Inter. And yesterday, uh, it comes out that, you know, Scamacca is a done deal to Atalanta. Atalanta come in. Atalanta obviously have the money now. They sold, <laughs> speaking about the striker market, they sold Rasmus Hoyland for, was it 70 plus bonuses, up to 80 million euros to United for a guy who scored nine goals last season. So they've got bare money, lots of money, plenty of money to spend. Plus, they're selling Jeremy Boga for around 18 million, I believe. Um, so those guys, they, 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 you know, Atalanta historically don't have much money, but these guys right now have a lot of money to spend. They spend about 30 million on El Bilal Torre, another striker they bought from uh, from Spain. Uh, typical Atalanta signing. Never really heard of him, but <laughs> I'm sure he's actually probably a good player. Their scouting usually uh, is on point. And uh, now another 30 million on Atalanta Scamacca. So Hoyland out for 70, 80. Bilal Torre plus Scamacca in for, for 60. Very much player trading from Atalanta plus 20 million from this whole deal. Two new strikers, one out. You could probably say they probably upgraded as well in terms of Hoyland, the guy who's scoring on nine goals. But the, so this is the thing. So did Atalanta outbid Inter? But looks of it, yes. You know, according to Sky Sport in Italy, and again, there's been conflicting reports on this uh, throughout this this uh, saga over the last week. First, it was, you know, first, actually, we were surprised over the summer. We haven't really been linked with Skamaka because we were linked with Skamaka heavily, not like last season, but the, before before he went to West Ham in the build-up to the transfer window last summer, that, you know, Skamaka is the chosen one, you know, Inter want him to be the future number nine, and then of course, we know Sassuolo's demand, so he ended up going to West Ham for about 40 plus million, which was obviously too much, even for me, who I was a Skamaka fan, I would have never paid 40 million for him. Flops comes back now. We offer the, the reports are 24 plus four. And now here, Sky Sport, as I said, in Italy said Inter actually had pretty much matched Atalanta's offer, very similar offers for West Ham. Atalanta's offer, the difference was there's more advantageous due to easily accessible bonuses. Uh, and the offer, to, this is the key part, the offer to the player is higher, or Atalanta's offer was, was higher. Um, and at this point yesterday, they were still saying it's 50-50 because they thought, you know, Skamaka had given his preference to Inter. So this is where I need your opinion, guys. What do you make of this in terms of Skamaka's decision-making? Because this is where now I'm, as I said, he was my number one choice, but it wasn't like I was all in, like this guy is the guy, he is, we have to get him at all costs. 
the offer we made already you know 24 plus 4 i decided that even inter may, may have matched the 30 million offer atalanta added a 10 percent resale clause in so if they sell him on which atalanta usually do and West Ham probably know that West Ham actually end up you know making a little bit more money in the future as well that was probably the clincher for West Ham so they definitely outbid Inter in terms of that but did they bid outbid Inter because Inter weren't fully convinced because now the reports are also saying that Skamaka wasn't the number one choice I know it seems like you know coping mechanism or Inter putting stories out into the media like ah no no it wasn't our first choice anyway so let's see Again, we have to wait to see how the market develops. So the reports now are indicating that Balogun, you know, we've talked about the American slash English boy plenty of times now this summer. He seems to have been the number one target. And over the last few weeks, it's kind of quieted down. We haven't really heard much about him. But now, since yesterday, now he's saying that Skamaka was only, you know, really because there's an opportunity. They saw that, you know, West Ham were willing to sell this guy at a cut price. And um, so they focused on him to acquire him but Balogun remains the number one priority I don't know I don't know it seems <clears throat> a lot of conflicting stories on this and again you know we've talked about it with Kamaka I thought you know we're talking about like a loan or obligation but these dudes talking about Atalanta buying him outright so already you know I was happy to get Skamaka if it was a loan with option or obligation but buying him outright 30 million after the season he's had with his injury street uh, 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 it's not a coping mechanism a pro promise i'm not losing sleep over this and for for skamaka let's look at it from skamaka's point of view guys this is where i want your opinion where does it make sense because i tweeted out yesterday that uh, maybe some people think it was a bit of a, a bitter tweet let's say uh let me uh let me put it up a lot of milanisti were commenting under it like, oh yeah it's because he lost him this is don't be sad don't be sad let me find it. here it is so this is what i uh tweeted yesterday so i said if it's true someone Skamaka has chosen atalanta over inter and if it's true that atalanta offer high wages it says a lot about his mentality bullet dodged what do you guys make about that because i think that says a lot if it, again we need to wait for the confirmation the stories is true everything to be matched up if it's true that atalanta offered according to reports they offered a slightly higher than three million net wages so 3.2 3.3 so marginal and then, obviously, what can Atalanta offer over Inter? Gasparini, we know he's great at developing players. So, okay, I can give I can give that to Skamaka. Um, attacking system, so he should be able to get a good amount of goals. And, you know, we've got the European, the, the Euros coming up. So he wants to be the starter for Italy. So he wants to be the starter for his club team, not have the situation of West Ham repeat. And he should be, in theory pretty much a given starter right now uh for atalanta um so in that in that case it makes sense but ambition wise i mean atalanta i I completely forgot where atalanta finished last season let me actually quickly check the table for where atalanta finished because of juve's uh situation it was oh atalanta even they didn't even finish in the um European spots so oh wait they might have because you know um but the Juve Juve's disqualification well anyway you know even if they are in Europe it'll be conference league and if uh, it's so in terms of ambition they're already you know kicking that over into potentially challenging for Scudetto obviously we're in the Champions League you know we're always challenging for Coppa Italia he hasn't won any trophies yet in his career or oh, actually apart from the conference league um so question marks for me there now he's what is he? he's 25 i think is he now it's kamaka 24 in january he will be 25 oh he's born on new year's um so he's not young anymore yes by italian standards he's young but you know 25 you're not know, young anymore uh so question marks to me on that decision make from skamaka so actually it might sound like coping mechanism and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not really losing too much sleep over it. And, uh, you know, we've had, argue, argue, you know, debates with people over the years, though. People say, like, you know, he's just the overpriced Pinamonti. You know, Pinamonti had a similar season like him. And then, you know, Pinamonti was valued 20. This guy was valued 40 because of aesthetics, his tattoos. He looks cooler. Or he aesthetically plays better, better goal 
collections, which I, probably there's some truth to that. But again, I repeat, there is a potential there. I felt that Inzaghi could get the best out of this potential. You know, we've seen what he's done with Immobile, with Lautaro. Um, you know, I felt like, you know, give this guy to Inzaghi with Turam, with Lautaro, that trio, plus fourth striker, you know, whoever you get in, if even if it's Correa, that is potentially Scudetto winning quartet or trio at least. And then more confirm, uh, more stories that have come out. Um, Gazzetta even said that from from yesterday at the beginning of the day. Again, this is where the you know we'll see what the the, the truth is. He reiterated his willingness to join Inter. The club even had booked flights to welcome the attacker in Milan. West Ham had given the formal green light to the proposal from both clubs, so Inter and Atalanta. But Atalanta's higher salary offer was crucial in Scamacca's final decision. Again, this is where we need to wait to see the facts. But again, this if, if a few 200-300k is what convinced Scamacca, that's a red flag to me. Inter did not want to increase their offer and withdrew from the deal in the afternoon. So there, there again, Inter clearly not convinced, you know, well, yes, we're broke, guys, but we can outbid Atalanta. Actually, they're actually, you know, because these guys don't pay more than two, 2.5 million net. So if this guy's getting paid like more than 3 million net, these guys are breaking the salary budget for this guy. And if we were going to bidding like wage one, I know we broke, but we can, we could have outbid Atalanta. Um, so in the end, it clearly, if, if these, if the, the way Gazzetta have put it forth here, it looks like Inter just weren't really convinced about the deal. They thought, you know, if we can get this guy for around 25, 28, all good. But anything above that, and of course, he doesn't benefit from growth decree. So a three, three plus million net salary is, you know, almost six million gross, which gets quite expensive. And then you're getting to, you know, yearly costs of, uh, you know, 12, 14 million euros on the books, yearly cost to the book. So... It doesn't look good on us. It doesn't look good on us. I can't lie. You know, getting outbid or out beaten to a player by Atalanta is that has that ever happened? Um, and yeah, it says you know Marotta, you know, wasn't really uh, you know this 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 behavior from uh, from Scamacca kind of made it so that you know Inter pulled out of the race um, again. You know, talking about ambition, sporting dreams still kind of young but mentality wise is this really the one and again yeah like we've had examples in the past like you know Fratesi even his boy is his, his footballing best friend Fratesi recently just you know was had his heart set on Inter we don't have yeah, it's not really a case a good case to measure because no one really matched Inter's offers there were a few teams interested like Juve Roma and Milan but no one actually put up serious offers for him whereas for Skamaka there were two teams putting bids on the table. But yeah, you know, Gazzetta here used the example of Barella who said no to Roma. Roma were close to getting Barella when we signed them, but he said, no, I want Inter. Uh, and if Kazamaka really wanted Inter, you know, they moved so quickly. It moved so quickly. A space of two or three days, this guy wanted Inter and then offer from Atalanta, boom, he's gone. So yeah, I'm not losing sleep over it. The problem is, again, we go back to the striker market. Balogun, I'm not, he doesn't move me. I keep saying this. I'm not convinced by him, but you guys know one of my favorite sayings, especially with Inter, is open the window, breathe some fresh air, some new ideas, some new players, players that we don't know much about. Let's go with it. Young, hungry players like Balogun. You guys know I keep saying the name of Gift Orban, the young Nigerian who plays for Ghent in Belgium, but we're not linked with him. Apparently, Spurs are going to be signing him, but. Let's get someone like that. Beto is the one that apparently is the alternative, the Udinese guy. You guys know he's, a, to me, he's like a meme player. But even him, you know, a guy, at least he is super, super athletic, an absolute machine. Yes, his touch is atrocious, but if Inzaghi, according to reports, that's why we're not linked with the other types of guys. Inzaghi seems to want, he, he's not fully convinced by Balogun because he wants a big guy. So that's why Skamaka, Beto, other names thrown around. He wants the Jekyll of the situation. Although I thought the whole point of Turam was that as well, that he can do he can do the bit of the Korea second striker work, but also 
he can also be that big target man which we've seen in preseason he's, he's kind of able to do so yeah you guys let me know in the comments down below what do you make of this whole skamaka saga saga johnny scams let's see if he does scam uh atalanta like he scam west ham see you in the next one guys leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel